Good day my schoolers, you are welcome to my school channel and my name is Abiola. Remember in this channel you'll be joining me to tackle the jam city past question for the subject biology the year 2014. Do not go anywhere, stay with us and we will be right back. school channel and in this video segment we are solving questions 1 to 25 so let's begin with question 1 the lowest level of organization in living organisms is what okay so let's take it we have cell we have tissue we have organ and system so the lowest of these is the cell option B is the correct option question 2 which of the following is the most complex according to their cellular level of organization? So, if I'm going to take this presentation, um, the heart, okay, this is the highest organ level. You know, we have cell, we have tissue, we have organ and system. So, we don't have system here, but we have an organ, which is the heart. When you talk about hydra, you're talking about cholenterate, all right, you're talking about invertebrates, aquatic um, animals. So, um, cholenterate, all right, so. Uh, when you talk about Oglina, you're talking about a unicellular, although it has um, um, animal-like and plant-like um, features or characteristics, rather. Okay, so when you talk about air, you know, you're talking about um, the air follicle, all of these come together. Basically, you are pointing to a tissue. You know, the layer we are seeing, they are the dead layer. Okay, so, um, so this is tissue, this is um, cell level, this is organ. So the highest here is the heart organ level of organization so going back to the question which of the following is the most complex according to their cellular level of organization we give that to at option a question three which of the following organisms is multicellular okay so the correct answer is spirogyra is a simple multicellular organism it exists are some filaments okay chlamydomonas unicellular and it is autotrophic all right so we talk about amoeba of course it is unicellular but heterotrophic uglina unicellular of course and uh, remember it has a um, plant like and animal like um, characteristics so the correct option here is option b for spirogyra question four in bryophytes sex organs are produced in the way okay so uh, first, when you talk about bryophytes, we're talking about the liver, water, and mosses. Okay, so um, the sporophyte is always dependent and attached to the gametophyte. So it is right there in the gametophytes where you have um, the, the production of the motile male gametes or the sperms and the non motile female gametes, which you, you can call the egg. All right, so the correct option here is option C for the gametophyte. Question five. Seed plants are the most dominant vegetation on land, okay, because of what? Because of their efficient seed dispersal. This also accounts for their widespread, all right? So when you talk about seed plants, I'm talking about uh, the spermatophytes, you're talking about the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. So the correct option is option C for efficient seed dispersal. Question six, we have, um, which of the following is an arboreal organism? So when you talk about arboreal organisms, typically we are talking about trees, okay? Uh, animals that spend uh, most of their time on trees, most of their existence on trees. So uh, if you look at this elephant, talking about, <laughs> so when you talk about fish, talking about water, yeah, antelope, of course, all right. So birds, the pet, the example, your parrot. So the correct option here is option D for birds. Number seven. We have, um, okay, the general formula above represents that of what? So this is a dentition. So we have an um, incisor, okay, two up, one down. We have canine, zero, zero, that is absent. We have premolars, we have molars, okay? So since canine is absent, that tells you that the animal is definitely herbivore, okay? So, and um, this particular dentition is found in rabbits. So it's, it's a rabbit and it's also herbivore. So the correct option here is option D for Abivo. Question 8. 
A circulatory system is very essential in mammals, but not in smaller organisms like amoeba because what? So, uh, specifically when we talk about amoeba, uh, you know, when food is present in the food vacuole, then um, enzymes secreted from the cytoplasm, okay, gets to the vacuole. And once this enzyme acts on this food, they become soluble products, okay? So these soluble products now can diffuse, all right, from the vacuole back into the cytoplasm. So basically what I'm just talking about is I'm talking about diffusion. So the correct option here is because diffusion is sufficient to transport materials in amoeba. So option B is your correct option. Question 9. In vascular plants, the sieve tubes and companion cells are present in the way in the phloem. All right. So basically their function is to um, when you talk about the unloading or loading of sugars, that is transport of sugars, okay? So you can find this in the phloem. So the correct option, of course, is option D for phloem. Do not forget that you just have to join the winning team. All you need to do, click on that link in the description below. It's going to transport you to the My School website where you can get the mobile app or the software for your laptop. So join me as we solve question 10. The stomata of leaves are similar in function to the wort. So, talking about this uh, stomata, you know, the opening and the closing of it is responsible for the exchange or movement of gases, all right, that is in leaves for plant. So, it's very similar to the spiracle of insects. You know, it's found alongside the body cavity of these insects, the thoracic cavity, the abdominal side, and what have you. So, the, spir the spiracle opens up or leads to the trachea, then the trachea. So, whatever you want to describe it. So, the correct option here is option C. It is very similar. The stomata of leaves is similar in function to the spiracle of insects. So option C is very correct. Do not forget that for you to get more of this wonderful content, all you need to do is to always hit that like button, also click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get alert as soon as we upload the next video clips. Question 11. The use of moist skin for respiration in amphibians is known as what? So when you talk about amphibians, we're talking about frogs, we're talking about toads, okay? Respiration in amphibians can occur through the skin, through the buccal cavity and the lungs. So when you talk about um, the use of moist skin for respiration in amphibians, you are talking about cutaneous respiration or skin breathing. So the correct option here is option B. Number 12. Water in plants is removed as water vapor through the process of what? Okay, the opening and closing of the stomata, you know, talking about movement of gases, all right. So, um, when uh, control is involved, this is to prevent excessive water loss, okay, in form of water vapor, okay, through the process of transpiration. So, water in plants is removed as water vapor through the process of what? Transpiration. So, option D is your correct option. Question 13. An example of an organ of perination in plants is what? So when you talk about this concept, we're talking about um, storage, okay, of, um, of food, okay, probably in a kind of condition whereby it's not favorable. All right. So, um, so an example of such organ, we have these options provided, okay. So we have rhizome, we have seed, we have petal of a flower, we have calyx of a flower. So um, I will put it uh, properly that um, though some plants have um, storage organs like um, their fruits or seeds, um, their stem or roots, okay, but the most viable one here, okay, is the rhizome. Okay, other examples are like the tubers and what have you. So the most viable option, okay, um, seed is um, also presentable, but the most viable option here is a rhizome. So the correct option is option A. Number 14, alternation of generation is a feature shown in what? Is a feature shown in bryophytes. So when you talk about bryophytes, you're talking about liverwort and mosses. So we have mosses there. So the correct option is option A for mosses. Question 15, coordination and regulation of body activities in mammals are achieved by what? Okay, so 
uh, for coordination and, and for this uh, concept presented to us in MAMAS, we're talking about the nervous system and the endocrine system, okay? These two come together and they bring about this concept, all right? So the link between them is the hypothalamus. So when you talk about the nervous system, you can just put it simply, you're talking about nerves, okay? Endocrine system, talking about hormones via the circulatory system and what have you. So the correct combo here is the nerves and the hormones. So option B is the correct option. Question 16. The cerebellum of the brain controls what? Okay, when you talk about the in-brain, all right, you're talking about um, parts that it comprises of the cerebellum, the pons varoli, and the medulla oblongata. So when you talk about the cerebellum, okay, we are talking about that part that is responsible for the control of um, body posture, muscular movement, and um, what have you, body balance as well. So, if you look through all of the options provided, the correct option here is option B for muscular activities. Number 17, the part of the brain responsible for peristalsis is what? So, in talking about peristalsis, we're talking about, um, we're talking about the digestive system. Okay, let me just put it that simply. Okay, so, when you have the options presented to us, the part of the brain responsible for this, okay, is what? So that part of the brain is the in-brain. And I mentioned the previous clip, it comprises of the cerebellum, the pons varoli, and the medulla oblongata. So some functions of the medulla oblongata, they, inc they include um, involuntary activities or movements of the body, like things concerning respiration, things concerning heartbeats. Okay, we are talking about heartbeats. Then also digestion. So I just related this to digestion. So the correct option here is option B for medulla oblongata. Question 18. Which of the following instruments is used for measuring atmospheric pressure? That's your barometer, thermometer, talking about temperature, hygrometer, relative humidity, hydrometer, you're talking about some density of um, a specific gravity. All right, so the correct option here is option D for barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure. Question 19. The influence of soil on organisms in a habitat is referred to as what? Okay, so when you talk about soil, you're talking about abiotic factors. You know, we can classify them. Uh, we, are, we can talk about uh, topography or topographic factor. You can talk about the edaphic factor, which is talking about soil, its, um, soil, its composition, you know, the pH of the soil, nutrients, structure, and what have you. You can talk about chemical factors like mineral salts, oxygen, and what have you. You can talk about um, the climatic factors, okay, like rainfall, temperature, sunlight, and the like. So, the influence of soil on organisms in a habitat is referred to as what? the edaphic factor. So the correct option here is option A for edaphic factor. We understand that better questions or more questions actually breed understanding. So all you need to do to ask those questions so that you can better understand this concept we are trying to communicate is to use the link description below. Once you click it, it's going to take you to the My School website. There you get to meet our solution providers. So nothing stops you from asking those questions. So join me as we solve question 20. The genetic makeup of an organism is described as what? Okay, so the sum total of the genes that an organism inherits from its parents, okay, that is the genotype. So the physical expression of characteristics is the phenotype. It's a combination between the genetic makeup, the genotype, and environment, the interaction between these two. So the genetic makeup of an organism is described as what? Option D for the genotype. You may have better steps or explanations towards any of the questions we have tackled so far. We are so interested in knowing this. All you need to do is to use the comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanations you'd like to recommend. Question 21. The major limiting factor of productivity in the aquatic habitat is what? Okay, so um, all of these listed here, they are very important. Um, factors okay so uh, but you know when you talk about the aquatic environment you know we can do a kind of um, division for the um, littoral zone and the benthic zone you know littoral zone we're talking about 200 meters anything um, beneath that 200 meters you're talking about the benthic zone okay where there is 
no penetration or very little penetration. We can, we can put it absolutely as no penetration of sunlight, okay? So at the benthic zone, there is, it is dark, it is cold, there is little amount of oxygen, the pressure there is very high. So we can see that all of these factors, they are actually uh, well put together. So in the benthic zone, um, sunlight does not reach it, so that means there are no producers. So that lays a problem for food. So the animals that are being found there, their food um, mainly, talking about those animals, comes from the remains that comes from the littoral zone, okay, so food remains. So I, I can put it here that the major limiting factor of productivity in the aquatic habitat, all right, is food. Although this is arguably, this is subjective, all right. So this is my presentation on food. Like I said, temperature is important, water is important, sunlight as well is very important, okay. So, but I would just want to put it forth to you that I'm picking food. So what do you go for? So option A is my presentation. 22. Which of the following group of organisms feed directly on green plants? Okay, the green plants, they are the producers. So the herbivores, they feed on the green plants, they feed on the producers. So such are referred to as the primary consumers. So the primary consumers, they feed on green plants known as producers. So the correct option here is option A for primary consumers. Number 23, a characteristic feature of tropical rainforest is what? Okay, let's examine option A. Contains trees with narrow leaves. This is incorrect. The trees found in tropical rainforests, they tend to be broad. So this is invalid. Contains large number of plant species. This is very correct because there are variety of trees there. Okay, so we can own this. Um, let's look at option C. Contains fewer number of plant species. This is incorrect. All right. Uh, D has total annual rainfall of less than 50 centimeter. This as well is incorrect. Okay, so the annual rainfall um, is about um, 2,000 meters, okay, or 2,000 millimeters rather. Then uh, when you look at um, the temperature, you're talking about something around um, 27 degrees. So the correct option here is option B, or the most viable option here is option B, contains large number of species. Question 24. The study of how and why population size change over time is what? Okay, the correct option here is option B, population dynamics. So when you are able to correctly define this term, it will help you easily and um, adequately identify the correct option. So the correct option here is option B for population dynamics. Question 25. A severe and long dry season is a characteristic feature of what? Of this higher savanna okay high temperature you also talk about um low rainfall okay lower than 50 centimeter so uh, when you talk about guinea savanna it's um, somewhat like this but in guinea savanna what you have is that um, there's low rainfall but not as low as what you have in Sahara savanna okay so low rainfall between now uh, 50 to 100 centimeters so the correct option here is option a4 sahel savanna We've come to the end of this video segment, but there is definitely the next video segment to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment.